So you still had uh, five minutes left on your presentation. Okay, at this time I'd like to just ask for a continuance. Okay. At all possible. Would anybody like to make a motion for continuance? I move that VRB 2124 located at 708 South Lois Avenue be continued to June 14th, June 14th at 6.30 p.m. I'll second. Okay. And a vote of hands, please. Six to zero, June 14th. Thank you so much. Okay, next case is BRB. You had your chance, Dave. You had your chance. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. It was okay. I saw somebody out in the hall. Sorry. Next case, BRB <laughs> 2126, located at 3601 South Rinelli Drive. And I believe you're present. Yes, you can wait there. We've got to go through the staff report first. And that brings it back to Mr. Sousa. 2126. Twenty-one twenty-six. Property is zoned RS60, residential single family. Uh, property owner is Anpu Gayan. The uh, proposed work is the construction of a pool enclosure. Request is reduce a rear yard setback from seven feet to three feet. Uh, staff to review it, find that consistent. We're not triggering any requirements. Let me get to my. Thank you. This is the subject property. This is the uh, subject area, zoning aerial. This is uh, off El Prado and South Rinelli. This is uh, south of El Prado and east of West Shore, west of uh, Dale Mabry. This is the pool. It's in a corner yard. Rear yard, just take that back. Rear yard, I'm a little flummoxed, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Seven feet to three feet. Excuse me, guys. Gentlemen. I'm not lost on this one. Here you go. Here you are. Agenda says corner yard, Joel. That's probably what it is. Corner yes. yard it's a corner yard. Three. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's a corner yard, three feet for the pool right here. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah. That was another world. Um, this is the property. It's on a corner yard right here. Pool's going right here where Nelly Nelly curves into Kensington. And this is where they need this set back from seven feet with RS6. The corner yard setback is seven feet, but also for that for pools and pools and closures. So they're asking for a reduction from seven feet to three. 
Thank you for helping. Uh, staff Chair, if you had any questions. Um, petitioner, please step forward. State your name, address, and if you've been sworn. I am uh, An Fu Nguyen. Uh, I live at 3601 South Renelli Drive, uh, and I have been sworn in. Okay, you've got 10 minutes to present your case. Um, uh, so, I've lived in Tampa for about 15 years, and uh, I only recently moved to South Tampa um, over the last two years. Um, and I, there were two things I wasn't ready for when I moved to South Tampa. One is the flooding, and then the other is the mosquitoes that come with the flooding. Um, when we brought this uh, property two years ago, um, we were, were told that you know there was a pool that was actually already built. Um, and I actually can show you a picture of that, if that's OK. Um, this is the actual, may I use this? This is the actual pool that's, that was actually built on the property um, before we purchased it. And as you can see, you know, it, it sits very close to the property line. And you know, when we discussed it with the, with the builder, they had told us that you know, if it ever comes to it, you know, the, there's a problem, uh, it would be very easy to build a pool enclosure on it. Um, you know, at first, we, weren't gonna, we, we didn't think about building a pool enclosure until you know, obviously we ran into the mosquito pro uh, issues. Um, when we were confronted with that problem, we spoke to our neighbors. Um, you know, we have very nice neighbors that, um, one Pete Sotowski, who has lived there for 10 years, lives directly north of us. And um, Mr. Uh, Ortha Morgan lives directly to the west of us. Um, and you know, we, they, they had tried, they lived there for, for over a decade, and they had both tried different things to get rid of the mosquitoes, um, including like fumigating, um, the grass, and they spent a lot of money on that, and, and both of them, told us that you know, it, it was a lost cause. And so they both recommend that we try to build a, a pool enclosure. Um, our neighbor um, actually does have a pool enclosure. Um, this is the neighbor right to the back of us. And you can see that they have a pool enclosure. And you know, most of the houses around there do have pool enclosures because I think that mosquito problem has been there for quite some time. Um, and you know, so we started to look into building a pool enclosure and then, um, you know, Six months later, uh, here I stand before you. Um, you know, what we, when we first talked to the builder, they had told us that you know, the requirement is five feet from the, from the uh, property line. Um, but I think for a corner lot, it's actually seven feet and you know, because of the corner lot. And I, you know, I think the uniqueness of the property is that you know, because it was so narrow, they couldn't build the house you know, obviously that, that close to the property. Um, I'll show you the picture again. And, um, and so they ended up having to build the, the pool on the side facing the corner. And you know, unfortunately, you know, this is what we were left with. And um, so you know, that, that's the reason I'm here today to request that we um, change the, the corner lot um, from three feet to seven feet. And just to be clear, the three feet mark um, will sit right around there. So it will only go on the actual pool enclosure where the, the tavertine is as it stands. It won't go anywhere beyond the fencing, um, which again, we, we had discussed that with, the, with some of our neighbors, and they just wanted us to clarify that, that we weren't going beyond the fencing at all. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Does that conclude your presentation? Uh, yes, sir. OK. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this case? Seeing none, <laughs> then we'll open it up for board questions. Um, I have a question. Sure. I do not understand the Lanai overview. Uh, I don't even know what it is. Like, uh, yes, it, if someone could explain that to me, I'd really appreciate it. Is that the, are you talking about the, the, the picture that they drew for it? Um, yes, it has a bunch of squares with two by five and I, yeah, we I haven't seen anything like this. So I would just, if you could explain what it means, I would appreciate it. This, this, this picture? Yes, thank you. Um, so let me see. Um, could you zoom out a little bit? It's up at the top. The little white circle. There you go. Keep going. I think it's as far as this. 
Oh, then okay. Then, yeah, just turn it sideways. Yeah. Um, Perfect. So the pole actually, when you look at the, the photograph, let me see if I can find it easier. Um, this is kind of how it's looking at right there. That's, so the pole is actually like right oh. here. And so this is the one eye, and then so the, I suppose the enclosure would go right around here. Um, the lanai is existing, you're saying. That's, that's, the, yeah. that's the house. Those are the structural members that outlie the roof, the roof enclosure of the screen porch. Those are all connections. So that's, that dotted line is, in fact, the screen enclosure, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. And then this is just um, looking from, if you're standing, um, looking, I guess, at the, at the, if you're looking south from the north end of the house, mm -hmm. Um, this is how it would look. Okay. And so essentially, all of the travertine is being enclosed with the screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, I have a question for uh, legal again. Ms. pettis -Mackle? Apologies, I seem particularly... Uh, heavy on the questions tonight, but this goes back to one of the questions I asked during our workshop that I never felt like I got an answer to. Um, when a builder builds a house and you acquire a home from the builder and the builder builds it without a screen enclosure, do we have a self-created hardship situation? Can you can you acquire it? You can't acquire the self credit. What about when you have knowledge of an existing? Um, just say no if the answer is no. Because. <laughs> Kamaria Pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office. So if this, if an applicant yeah. created a hardship. Right. Easy. Easy situation. That's, that's, Easy situation. Okay. Right. If they bought the property with the existing. The existing. Um, a self-imposed hardship that's that exists that existing not don't, they don't they don't buy it they don't buy the hardship and buy the self-creation of it they just but they buy the property and right. that property has that violation or I mean, that um condition condition on the property so right. that follows the property so the that's exactly my question but it's not self-created but it doesn't it doesn't make they it self-created the for them. applicant would have to i'm sorry the applicant would have to argue and it's the burden of the applicant to determine to to present that they meet the hardship criteria okay. but it has nothing to do with self-creation right they, okay they, that's they, what they, i thought but yes, i just wanted they to confirm still it. have to okay. prove that the hardship criteria okay But I learned something. Um, any more questions? Sammy, get your mic on. Okay, then you have three minutes for rebuttal if you need it. Um, I, I will say I, I, I was listening to you guys earlier discussing you that, sure. and I, I do understand that concept. Um, when I did buy the, <clears throat> so the house is a, a, it was a spec build, so we didn't have any say in how it was designed, and we bought it after it had already been been pretty much completed, um, and so the we did we had no idea that we would need a variance for it. They actually, the builder had suggested that they actually already put in the footers for it, um, so that's why we were kind of caught off guard when the uh, when the pool company came back because they we, we paid them to to do all the um, all the obtain all the permits, and then I guess the, the variance was the only one thing that they could not do, and. So they, they were they were surprised too that there there had not been already a variance. Um, if you look at the actual pool itself, so they did something sneaky. What they did was the um, you know to build to build a pool itself requires seven feet in, and so if you actually look at the, the the pool itself, it sits at seven feet. So the only way that we could have built a enclosure within their own guidelines without the variance was to actually pull, build the enclosure physically in the pool. Um, and so, you know, again, that's, I think that goes back to whether or not the hardship was like itself inflicted or not. Um, if we had known that we could not build an enclosure, you know, that we would not have bought that house, our house. I'm sorry, one quick question. Yeah. That is a side yard. 
Is it not? Yes, it's a. It's the. I guess they because the house itself. No, it's a corner yard. Corner. It's it's on the corner. It's on the corner, but when you walk into the front door, if you, mm -hmm. as traditional orientation, this pool is to the side, yes, not to the rear, yes, as what it would normally be. And in my estimation, that that's not a self-imposed hardship. It's just unfortunate that you built the pool on the, on yeah. the side of the house instead of the back. Because it's a corner lot. Right. Yep. Well, we're actually asking questions in the middle of this rebuttal, so Sorry. you know, take take some more time for rebuttal if you need it. Uh, no, oh, that's it, sir. Okay. Um, well, do you have anything else that you care to say before we close the public hearing? Um, no. Okay. Then we will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion or board discussion. I will make a comment and then um, I will make a motion. Um, so um, I, I will just note that in the applicant's application, he also explained that the Lanai um, would help, uh, you know, for safety purposes during a hurricane, which I um, think is also um, a convincing argument here. So I move that the variance request for case VRB 21-26 for property located at 3601 South Rinelli Drive be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a reduction in the corner yard setback from seven feet to three feet for a pool enclosure with an encroachment for eaves and gutters based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code specifically that um, the practical difficulty does not result from the actions of the applicant and it's not self-created um, in fact the applicant purchased the property with the pool already constructed on the property line and there's no reasonable way to construct a lanai um, except to encroach into the setbacks. Um, the property is on a corner yard, which makes it a bit of a unique property. Um, and the variance will result in substantial justice being done when, sorry, will not substantially interfere with the health, safety, or welfare of others. And in fact, um, will provide some protection from hurricanes. Second. Okay. And those who say aye, raise your hand. That's six to zero. Motion's been approved. All right, thank you, board. I'll make sure the next case is
Okay, at this time, can we ask everybody that wishes to speak or intends to speak or may speak in any capacity to stand and be sworn in? Okay, case VRB 2128, located at 2313 South Artson Place. Mr. Souza. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Joel Souza, Development Coordination. Uh, zoning District is RM16, Residential Multifamily. Property owner is Laura and Matthew Hurd. Agent is Julie Parrott and Ramon Perez. Their, the request is to add a second story accessory structure garage element with living areas to increase the access and to increase the accessory structure height from 15 to 25 feet. Uh, DRC has reviewed the application and found it consistent. Let me show you pictures of the of this. <clears throat> this is the house. In question. Here's the location. It's just off Base Road Boulevard. Arts and Place is right here. And this is the house right here. This is the existing survey as it sits. And there's an ex existing one story garage right here. They're proposing to extend the garage out and add a second story living element to the structure. They're allowed to do up to 750 square feet without penalty of primary setbacks. This is the proposed site plan. Staff is here if you have further questions. Kamaria pettis Mackle from the City Attorney's Office. Mr. Sousa, can you just verify that the request is only to increase the accessory structure height from what, what the um, request is? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Joel Sousa, Development Coordination. Uh, the uh, applicant was interested in a TECO power line setback, but that is nothing that the board can grant. So uh, that is not in, in play today. You'll see in the application, they did put it on the application, but it's, it's, no, it's not a setback that the board can uh, make, a, make a judgment on. So you're only going to be reviewing the height of the accessory structure from 15 feet to 25. Okay, petitioner, please step forward. Please state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. My name is David Balber. Um, I'm the architect uh, acting as an agent. Uh, Julie and uh, Ramon couldn't be here. Um, so I'm familiar with the site plan. I actually drew it. Um, if, if we go back to the, the previous one. Could you state your address and whether or not you've been sworn? Uh, yeah, my, my address is 9047 Breland Drive, Tampa, Florida, 33626. And have you been sworn in? Yes. Okay. I have. You've got 10 minutes to present. Okay. Um, so basically what we want to do um, is work with the one-story existing garage that stands today um, and we want to break the height limit um, from 15 feet uh, to 25 feet to allow us to do that to get um, an ex a second story above the garage um, it's basically that simple uh, the the house um, the the homeowner is is here um, and, and he can speak as well, um, obviously, to that. But um, the house, uh, they, they have children, um, they have in-laws that are um, elderly, and um, they're starting to forget things. So um, the concept is to get them living closer um, to their family. Um, we don't feel that, um, that doing this would, um, would affect life safety issues in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's, it's strictly one of those things that we have to ask a, a variance for. 
could you please address the five hardship criteria that were in the application? Because that's solely what we have to base our decision on. The hardship is um, that the in-laws live don't, don't live with them, so um, and they they'd like to be close with them. Um, they basically like to live with them. Um, there's no way to um, to basically do it other than than this way to have an accessory structure. Okay. Well. The personal drivers for project are not consideration for hardship. The hardship is based on the property. Um, okay. Okay. So conditions. right. Correct. So um, so the hardship is that um, with the height being 15 feet, um, th there's an existing garage that they use, and you know they have storage, and you know just like we all do. Um, so the hardship is the height. Obviously, okay. Um, so with that 15 feet, we can't go two stories. But if we have 25 feet, then we can. Okay. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this case? Please state your name, address, right. and if you've been sworn. Name is Matthew Hurd. I'm sorry, what was the, the second part Address? Of that? Uh, 2313 South Arts in Place. And if you've been sworn in? Uh, I have, yes. Okay, you've got three minutes to speak. Yeah, uh, evening again. Thank you um, for hearing uh, my request. Uh, just a, a small background. I know it's been a, a long night for everyone. Um, my, my wife and I moved to Tampa six years ago. Um, we bounced around a little bit with our jobs. Uh, we feel like we are, we are here to stay. We love it here. Uh, our neighbors are great. Um, and uh, as David mentioned, our in-laws, or my in-laws, uh, moved down a few years ago, uh, currently living in New Tampa, um, and looking to kind of to move in with us. <clears throat> Does that include that's, your yeah, um, presentation? It, it does, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this case? Seeing none, we will open it for board questions. Um, I had a question. This is a multi-family zoned, correct? It's an RM. Yeah. So. Also, yes, that's true. Uh, so, can't by that account, can't they? They can build another primary structure on the property, but they would have to follow primary setbacks. Uh, yes, ma'am. But yeah, generally, yes. The the kitchen will be the kick uh, the kicker on this. If a kitchen goes in to this dwelling unit, then the regular setbacks will start to be implemented. Okay, but I guess my, my question would be then that if it was a primary structure, they could have the 25 foot height. That is true. Okay, so but they're asking for an accessory structure, which or they're counting this as an accessory structure, which is why they're needing. That is true. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Just clarify. You know, so I just wanted to share with the board that that's typical, for instance, when you go to Hyde Park. The ARC Dave, for accessories. We're not supposed to make you testimony can't make ourselves. comparisons to zoning. It's just a shortfall in the zoning. So, are there any questions from the board for anybody, petitioner or otherwise? Uh, Ms. Long. Uh, to the petitioner, um, I thought I heard you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you had a garage that you couldn't really access because it was too close to the house. Did I misunderstand that? And, and Kamaria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office, um, and I'm sorry, Mr. Balver? Yes. You are the architect, correct? Yes, yeah, so I'm the architect from the same office as Ramon and Julie. Okay, and just, just um, for clarification, 
Um, the authorized agent is Ramon Perez. Um, and you're stating that you're within that same office. I just wanted to clarify that for the record that Ramon Perez is the, is the authorized agent, but the property owner is present. Okay, back to my question. Okay. Getting in and out of the garage. Okay, so you, your question is asking about the garage, right? Yes. Could we zoom in to the site plan? A little bit more to where you can see that connection. It's too hard. It's too hard to see on this. But the, the point is that the way that it stands right now. Is it good? Oh, there we go. I hear myself in stereo. Okay. Um, what I was saying is. The way that it stands right now is that the existing one-story garage that's there is simply built too close to the main house. Mm -hmm. So as you can just kind of eyeball it, um, you can see how hard it is to get a car, you, you know, to maneuver a car. I mean, a minimum, you know, distance that you want is 24 feet. That's like bare minimum, and this is less than that, um, not to mention you're dealing with the hard corner of a house. Mm -hmm. So um, originally what we wanted to do was um, get the second variance, which we, we talked about, which we're not going to address today um, from, from Tico. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at another point, another time, another place with that. But the, the, con the whole concept with that was that, as you can see, the existing drive if that was um, a garage, and what we, what we were even tossing around was that if we can do the second story, because obviously the second story is what this is all about, you know, um, and the hardship is just the height. So if we can do that, that's, that's the biggest win. But what we might also be able to do is possibly, you know, either put columns, you know, at the point loads of, of where we're, making that second story, or we could put a wall or something to uh, basically create a carport, like an open air situation where a car can easily pull in and then make a three point turn and pull out. So they're not compromising, you know, to get into that garage. And the garage might turn into more of like golf cart parking or more storage, you know, like storage. bicycles, you know. Okay, so it's only the back part of this garage, that back quarter that's cross hatched, that is going to have the second story, or is the whole garage? No. Going? So okay, so since there were two original variances, the cross hatch. Don't even look at that cross hatch because we're not talking about that now. What we are talking about is a diagonal hatch. Okay. Okay, which is diagrammatic, of course. I mean, we're not in elevation, and we're not, you know, doing that at this point because we just want to see if we're able to break the height limit. But the concept is that whatever we do create there will be in harmony with what's existing in the main house architecturally. So it'll look like it's in place. You know, it won't look out of place. And there's plenty of precedent, you know, um, to, to the south, um, that the neighbor just to the south has an accessory structure like this. But um, so the, just the diagonal hatch is just showing, you know, approximately where it would be. You know, if it has jig jags and if we move it a little back to make a nice lower roof, you know, to make it more aesthetically pleasing, you know, that would all come out, you know, once we design it. That, not the cross hatch, but the diagonal hatch is where the second story is. The, the diagonal, correct. That's where the second story is going to be. Correct. Why yes. aren't you adding it over here on the solid gray part? You see what I'm talking about? Yes. So the solid gray, um, the solid gray is showing the area of work. Okay. So so there's three things. There's the solid gray. There's the diagonal hatch, and then there's the cross hatch. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the 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 solid hatch is just basically bringing your eye to the area of proposed work that we're doing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I have a question.
question for the homeowner. When you purchased this home, was this structure already there? It was, yeah. Do you have any idea when about that was built? Uh, 87, I want to say. 80s. All right. That's my only question. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Walker, you have your microphone on. Seeing none. All right. Um, we've got three minutes for rebuttal, if you'd like it. Note that the applicant's off. waving his head no yeah. for the record. All right, we will close the public hearing and uh, open it up for motion or board discussion. Um, I'm just going to say I, ha I heard no hardship at all. funny because I felt the same way until you asked your question yeah. about multifamily <laughs> and then I thought oh well it is allowed to have multifamily but the building was already built in the spot that it's at so if you wanted to exercise the multifamily and you've already got the building then this might be a practical way to do it so you changed my mind but at this actually and but the thing is that I didn't hear that I didn't hear anything about that I brought it up and I, I yeah yeah I, but I mean 1987 potentially uh, as old as the homeowner so no offense <laughs> he's older than that but also I think it's in my, my opinion is it, it's reasonably used to expect on a on a street like arts and that you're gonna have a functioning garage and that's to me that's what what this is really about it's just you know it, it it's turning it into a functional garage. They have the ability, uh, ability to do it via the zoning, and they're not asking for anything as far as a variance when it comes to actual square footage. And as a, as a secondary unit for in-laws, it's, it's the kind of thing that we approve all the time. Except for the fact that if it's another primary structure, we, we would need, they need to be coming here for setbacks. But if they do right. it as a multi, if they do it as a mother-in-law secondary structure, when he goes to permitting, he's not going to be able to put a 220 line into the kitchen. Yeah. You're going to have a limited version of the kitchen. You're going to have to tie the sewer into the house sewer and the electrical onto the electrical meter, preventing you from sub-metering out to, to be a separate unit. So, so building permit will take care of that when they apply as a as a as a mother-in-law suite, not as a primary primary build. So he, here's here's my um, issue or, or concert thought process is that I would have a really easy time approving this for a variance in the setbacks if they wanted to make this a full um, like second residence. Um, because the garage is already there and it already encroaches into the setbacks and that's like definitely not, not self-created and it's um, you, like that's the kind of thing that, that we like pretty consistently find um, warrants a variance. My concern is that we get to the same place, you know, if we approve this variance. The, the problem is that I don't, I, I agree with you, that I don't necessarily see a hardship for the second story, but the end result is the same. In fact, to David, to Mr. Farrell's point, um, the end result is actually like probably more um, palatable to the neighbors if they care at all, because that means that a second family won't be moving in because it can't be separately metered. Um, so those are just sort of my thoughts on that. So would anybody like to make a motion? We are halfway through our agenda for the oh, evening. I'll make it. All right. Um, motion to approve, and this is approval without conditions, or am I, is that what this is? Whatever you wish to Whatever make Whatever I motion. wish it to be. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I move that for approval for variance request case VRB 2128, located at 2313 South Ardson Place, be granted as depicted on the site plan 
at a public hearing for a variance, excuse me, uh, for an increase in accessory structure height from 15 to 25 feet based upon the applicant's <coughs> presenting competent substantial evidence in the record of this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the far five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code, specifically that the applicant has shown the necessity for a functioning two-car garage, which is a reasonable market expectation, and that looking forward to making an extended family in this era of COVID, that this is an opportunity for them to create that dwelling unit for in-laws, and that the predominant zoning when it is applied for as a permit to be made as a heart as a in-law suite will prevent that unit from being used as a multifamily for a multifamily use. I'll second that. Thank you. Second from Ms. Long. And those that say aye, hands. Four, nay, two. The motion right. passes four to two. Next case is VRB 2131, located at 302 South Royal Palm Way. Mr. Souza? Project is zoned RS75 residential single family. Property owner is George and Pamela Alvarez. Agent name is Stephen Michelini. The proposed work is to construct a pool within the front yard with a pergola. Uh, project is to reduce the front yard setbacks from 20 feet to 5.5 feet and 25 feet to 15 feet. DRC reviewed this and found it consistent. Uh, transportation right away, transportation wanted them to uh, show an, two legal parking spaces on the site, but this is an existing house with a garage. Uh, transportation, I mean, right away also says there's an easement in the back of the property, but is not applicable to this development. Let me show you. It's a unique parcel. Here's a sub. This is West Shore Boulevard. This is a zeal. This is the property right on the corner. It it's unique in that it has two fronts. It has a front here along Azeal and a front here along Ro Royal Palm Way. And the, what you would think would be the rear yard is actually a side yard. So you've got two fronts and a side. Two fronts and a side. <laughs> two fronts okay. and a side. Very unique. Okay. Okay. This is a site plan of the property. These are the two front yards, Royal Palm and Azeal. This is the side yard back here in the back. This is a, a, the proposed pool with the architectural pergola here supporting the pool. Speaking with the zoning administrator, you can consider it an architectural feature and put conditions on it if required. But this is, this is where the pool is going. And going through the, uh, through your packet, you do have one letter of opposition from Ellen Lyons that's in your packet. Staff is here if you have further questions regarding the site. Okay. Applicant, please state your name, address. Steve Michelini. Whether you've been sworn. I have been sworn, and this relates to 302 Royal Palm Way. Okay. You've got 10 minutes to present. Um, okay, Joel showed you um, 
the site and it is it is a very irregular site and we're having to deal with the fact that we have two fronts one is a zeal and one is royal palm way the third element that we have to deal with is that um, a significant portion of this roadway royal palm way was reconfigured creating a cul-de-sac and you see the subject property is here and then we have the, the cul-de-sac it's here, and it, it cut off the access going to uh, going to West Shore. Here is the way it was originally platted. Here is uh, a highlighted version of what we're requesting. We also, uh, as part of this, have to vest the existing house because the house encroaches on that 25-foot setback as well. Uh, through a separate process, we're going to request that we replace the, uh, mace, the uh, wooden fence with a masonry wall, but that's, that's not before you tonight, but that's what that is showing you, um, is that we have a, a portion of that as a, as a masonry wall and, a, and the remainder, like 95% of it, is a wooden fence. Um, we have severe traffic issues of, along the Zeal, um, and this came from the city transportation service uh, level of service report that was provided to me by the city staff, Jonathan Scott. Uh, it's a two lane road. It's classified for 25 miles an hour. Um, although there are speed bumps, uh, there are speed, yeah, there are speed uh, tables here and they, there are signs and I'll show you in a second, reducing the speed limit to 15 miles an hour. They, they have an average of 4,244 trips per day. Let me walk you around the site here. This is the front of the existing structure. This is on uh, Royal Palm Way. This is the rear on uh, Zeal Street, and that shows you the two-car garage that the city was concerned about showing. This is looking west toward uh, West Shore along Royal Palm Way, and you can see the beginning of the cul-de-sac. This is on a zeal. The property owner's uh, property is immediately to the left here, and the stoplight and the intersection and the cul-de-sac are right behind this. This is a view looking down a zeal, is looking east, and you see the existing fence, the, the wood fence that's, that's there. The proposed pool and the pergola would be at the far extreme end of this near the cul-de-sac and the uh, end of the property right down here. There are no other properties that would be adversely affected by this. There, there aren't any properties uh, or residences there. We only have the, uh, the street and the cul-de-sac from West Shore. That's the cul-de-sac. The subject property is here. And then this is at the end of the cul-de-sac. You can see how close that is to West Shore and the stoplight there is uh, directing the traffic and controlling the traffic as best it can. In addition to that, we have this warning sign that's right in front of the property on a zeal, showing that there's speed tables there and there's a 15 mile an hour speed limit. Um, this is not a self-created hardship. The the properties, uh, the streets and the streetways were altered after the fact and previously the city was viewing the, the setbacks differently and didn't apply a double street frontage to a zeal and to a Royal Palm Way. This, this goes back several years. This is not a recent change. Um, so we have to deal with that and figure out how, how best to accommodate the home which has some encroachments into that setback as well as the proposal to construct a pool and a pergola at the far um, west end of the property. And again, I'll show you, I'll show you this, and you can see that this is the, this is the uh, edge of the cul-de-sac. This is where, the, right here is where the stoplight is uh, for West Shore and Azeal. There are no other properties that would be adversely affected. So, um, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan with respect to providing relief when you have conditions that were not brought on by the property owner. 
Um, it, it does not create a hardship for anyone else. If you, if for example, if the city didn't allow us to replace the wood fence with a, with a masonry wall, it still uh, is at the far end where, where you have no traffic whatsoever, no other pro property owner that would be even potentially affected by this. I've shown you the pictures that demonstrated um, the proximity of that. It would be immediately to the left here, uh, where, you're, where you're adjacent to a very busy, heavily traveled intersection. As I said, um, you already have heavy traffic there, and this is evidenced by the city's interest in placing the uh, speed tables and the 15 mile an hour speed limit. So um, we would not adversely affect any other property owner. It is consistent with the code. It is not a self-created hardship. And um, substantial justice would be done by approving this variance. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Does that conclude your presentation? That concludes my presentation. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this case? Seeing none, then let's open it up for board questions. I have one question for Mr. McLeany. Um, would the uh, property owner be okay with uh, us putting conditions on not enclosing the pergola? Yes. Okay. We would, let me state that on the record just so we have it clear. Uh, we have no objection to the condition that the pergola remain open and unenclosed. Um, and then I had a question for legal. Um, I was wondering, uh, Mr. Michelini mentioned that he also wanted the property vested, but that's not part of the request. He's asking for the the house, I'm sorry, the house to be vested. That's the house main house. I, but you mentioned wanting the house vested as the well. Se the, setbacks the, setbacks. Would, the setbacks would vest okay. the house. Thank you, thank you. They would have a dual effect. Granting the, the, the setbacks. Okay. Are there any further board questions? Nope. Seeing none, you've got three minutes for rebuttal. No, thank you. Okay. And we will close the public hearing and open it up for motion or board discussion. I'll make a motion. Um, did you, I don't know that it needs to be um, with conditions. Did you feel like it needs to be with conditions? No? No, I was just, I was just curious when okay. he mentioned it, so I wanted to see what everybody else thought. I'll make it without and we'll see what happens. Um, I move that the variance request for case VRB 21-31 uh, for property located at 302 South Royal Palm Way be granted as depicted on site plan presented at the public hearing uh, to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 5.5 feet and to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 15 feet. Um, based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record at the public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code. Specifically that this is a corner lot uh, with a triangle shape, very unusual and unique shape. Uh, the property has two frontages. Uh, there are no properties uh, that would be directly facing uh, this portion of the property and thus no properties that are directly adversely affected. Um, the property sits uh, on a Zeal Street as well as a cul-de-sac at the end of Royal Palm uh, and that uh, this is not a, a self-created hardship um, that uh, the property owner has a right to a rear yard which uh, under the current situation of the property doesn't seem to have uh, and that they are simply vesting some of the uh, existing home, uh, again, which is not an owner-created problem. Second. Oh, okay. Sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Seeing hands for aye. All right. Motion approved 6-0. Motion approved 
Thank you, board. Next case is VRB 2133, located at 2811 West San Rafael Street. Mr. Souza, staff report, please. They've been, uh, have they been sworn in? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, zoning District RS50, residential single family. Property owners Charles and Maureen Funk. Agent is Leslie Van Trump. The proposed work is for construction addition to single family residence. The variance request is to reduce the rear yard setback from 20 to 15 feet. DRC has f reviewed it and finds it consistent with the code. Let me show you. What's going on here? This is the front of the house. Here's the location. So we're again in South Tampa. There's the cross town. Sidio, so it must be near McDill. This is San Rafael right here. This is the subject property. Again, the front of the house. Here's the site plan. Let me blow it up a little bit for you. Okay, so when we first reviewed this project, the applicant was requesting a rear yard setback and a front yard setback. It has since been, since been discovered that uh, this is RS50, they get a front porch by right. So in essence, she can have an eight foot, uh, applicant have an eight foot open front porch all along the front of the property. Staff believes that is not applicable, that's not an applicable review for you today. Because it looks like, you know, she's gonna be able to meet that one. The interesting thing is the is the rear yard. Um, what's happening is the applicant is proposing to demolish this and create the addition here. This is what it was before, just to let you know what it looked like. And this is gonna disappear and this is gonna enter. Staff is here if you have further questions. Joel, where's the setback issue going to be? Can, can, can you, it's can, in the rear yard. Can you verify what the request is? The request is to reduce the rear yard setback from 20 to 15 feet. It says from 20 to 5. Right. It's 20 to 15, right? Yes, that was a, mis that was a mistake on, 20 to 15. on the city's part. Yes, that was... Yeah, it was on the original agenda. It's it's not what's on the agenda, right? Or that's correct. We are at, we are asking for a five foot rear setback variance, resulting in a fit fifteen foot setback instead of the required twenty foot for the construction of the residential addition. Are we in thirty three? No, she doesn't. They don't need it. Okay. All right. <laughs> That was complete. Why does my packet say reduce the side yard? Everybody clear before we move on? It's not. Brett? Is everybody understanding what the request is? Yeah. Yes, but my, okay. It, it's wrong yeah. in the package, what you're saying. Yes. The package states reduce side yard from seven to four, and that's, that's not, not correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Petitioner, please state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. My name is Leslie Van Trump, and I'm representing for 2811 West San Rafael Street, and I have sworn in. Okay, you've got 10 minutes to present. I'm sorry? You've got 10 minutes to present. <laughs> um, this is the quaintest, cutest little street you've ever seen. Very small houses, um, very old houses. The property appraiser said this house was built in 1939. My owner says it was actually built in 26. Um, when he bought, when they bought the property, the rear detached structure was already there. It is on the property line, both side and rear. They would like to remove that structure. Among other things, it has the laundry room in it. It's a very small house. There's no room to put a laundry room in the house. So they want, that's why they want the rear addition among other they want to add a little bit more space to the house um, creating a master bedroom and so they can put a laundry room in the house and then that will uh, remove that detached structure completely 
um, and make them have a nice rear yard. I do have two letters, one from each side of them on the same side of the street stating that they have no objection. And I, they just, I just received these letters when we came in, so I have not uploaded them into the system. Um, should I give them to someone, or do you all want them? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's one. Are you ready for the other one? Um, this is not a self-imposed hardship. The um, detached structure was already there, and the house is very old. I'm not sure when zoning went in there, but it was definitely after 26 and 39 when the structure was built. Um, the, oh, we do have a owner here. Mr. Funk is here to speak if you'd like to hear from him. Are there any questions? You still got eight minutes left on your presentation. Is there anything else you would like to tell us before we get into questions? I was so impressed when I drove down this street looking at this neighborhood. Um, the lots are small. The houses are small. Um, one of the quaintest streets I've ever seen. You would never guess that it's right directly across from the um, Palmasia Golf and Country Club. Um, but it, it's a beautiful street, and they are just trying to make their house better for the neighborhood, keep it in line with the rest of the neighborhood, and this is definitely going to enhance it. Um, let me introduce Mr. Funk and see if he has anything to say. Hello. Please state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. Yeah, I'm Charles Funk. I live at 2811 West San Rafael Street um, in Tampa, and I have been sworn. Okay, you still have um, six and a half minutes left. Yeah, so point. I would say probably um, what I would like to share is uh, the structure in the rear of the house. Uh, our desire is to remove that structure. Uh, it, does, it does sit right on the property line of both uh, my neighbor to um, uh, to the west and it sits on the property line with the neighbor uh, directly behind us and uh, that's it's a br it's a uh, block and screened structure um, uh, the block portion is where uh, it's a small amount of storage and that's where the washer and dryer are um, and then the preceding area is screened and my wife and I are getting on in years it's becoming very difficult to keep that area clean to make it useful uh, for us as living space um, and uh, obviously the the need to have to take our laundry out there uh, we'd like to bring that in the house uh, we think the plan that that uh, we've we've talked about will uh, will accommodate that well and so and also um, remove the structure from the property lines that exist today so that's really our desire is to uh, we want to make it a, a nice house for the neighborhood and and so that's our that's our approach Okay, does that conclude your presentation? It does. Okay. Um, at this time, is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this case? Seeing none, we will open it up for board questions. I have a question. Sure. What's the hardship to the presenter? What's the hardship related to the property? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the hardship is that the house was built a long time ago, a very small house. They're getting older, and they need primarily the laundry room in the house. They have bus uh, business in the city of Tampa, and they, so they have to do their laundry late at night after they get home from work. It's a retail store. Um, and it, they, 
they need to move the laundry in the house and there's just no room to put that washer and dryer in the house. Okay. I believe this house is 1,300 square feet. Because the only thing we're allowed to consider is things related to the property itself, not to the owners, but to the property itself. What's the hardship with the property that says they need that addition on the house? Could somebody, this you or somebody, tell us the dimensions of the property? Do you know the size of this lot? It, it looks like it's 50 by 100, but I'm... Yes. On, yes. According to this. Yes, it's a 50 by 100 lot. Yeah. Okay, so standard lot size. They... Do you know what the front yard setback is? The, the hardship is that the detached structure in the back that was already there when they built it, mm -hmm. it that, that really needs to be moved. Um, it is sitting right on those property lines. I mean, I, 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 they didn't make that hardship. That's not a self-imposed hardship, but they're going to get rid of that, which is going to, I believe, strongly improve the property overall, by far. And that's not even including the front porch, which is another issue. Okay. All right. Thank you. I mean, to get very technical, you could remove it now. You have the right to remove it at any time. Yes, we know, but... So that doesn't itse in itself dictate, you know, a variance. For they, they can remove it at any time, but they still are using it, and they need to put what they're using it for into the house. They have no washer and dryer if they get rid of that structure. Yeah, it just helps when you state that for us. So that's, that's the reason. Yes. That the reason, the hardship is that they need to put this washer and dryer into the house... Mm -hmm. So they no longer have to walk out to the very far rear of the property to do their laundry late at night. Okay. And if I'm understanding correctly, that's a safety concern for you and for the property owner. Is that accurate? It is a safety concern for the owners. Are there any other questions from the board? Seeing none, you've got three minutes for rebuttal if you'd like. No? We don't need to. Okay. Then we will close the public hearing and open it up for a motion or board discussion. I'm okay with making a motion. Okay. I move that variance request for uh, case VRB 21-33 for property located at 2811 West San Rafael Street be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing to reduce the rear yard setback from 20 feet to 15 feet uh, with the encroachment of eaves and gutters based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at the public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that this is a, a, uh, an old house built either in 1939 or 1926 uh, on a, uh, with a small house, a 1300 square foot house, that the um, lot dimensions uh, are standard, but uh, on the smaller side that they are, the owner is uh, removing an existing detached accessory structure uh, that has existed uh, since before they acquired the property, that the removal of this accessory structure which sits on the property line uh, would also remove the homeowner's uh, laundry room uh, and that the only place on this uh, relatively small lot with the existing 1300 square foot uh, home to place this laundry is uh, in a newly constructed structure that will uh, encroach only a minor amount into the 20-foot setback. Second. Second for Mr. Farrell. Um, see hands for aye. Uh, it's uh, approved six to zero. Mr. Farrell. Okay. 
for the final case of the evening, BRB 2134, located at 3011 West Lawn Avenue. Staff report, please. residential single family uh, property owner is George and Pamela Alvarez agent name is Steve Michelini the request is to reduce a side yard setback from seven feet to four feet to allow what wait on what okay yeah I got the I got the wrong one okay I was in a staff was in a rush I'm sorry guys <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not that one. That was, that got picked up. Right. The property. Thirty-four. Yes, we're wrong. See, yeah, the press. Scott and L. Piper, Life Estate, Stephen Michelini. Yes, I got, I got it wrong on the staff report, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, your mic is not on. Okay. It, so it's George and Pamela Alvarez? No, no. It's, it's Scott, Scott and L. Merritt. Piper and Life Estate. Okay, well, we don't have any of them, so go for it. No. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that was off a previous application. I got this messed up. Scott and Piper, Scott L. Piper is the owner. Is it? Yeah, it's, that's down. It's down on page nine where it says yes. property owner's information. It does have the correct name. Yes. Okay. yes. Do we feel like procedurally everything was filed appropriately to proceed? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Staff has many duties and let's unfortunately I, I slacked on this one. I'm sorry, board members. Let's Let's get them. But the, they're requesting a side yard setback from seven feet to four feet to enclose, enclose an existing carport. Uh, natural resources reviewed it, sounded consistent. Let me show you where this is. Maybe I can reel it in. Okay. Side yard from seven to four, seven feet to four feet. That's what he noticed for. Seven feet to four feet. Let me show the site. Let me clear it up with you guys before I continue on. This is the site plan. This is the site plan. What they're doing is enclosing the existing carport right here. And what they're attempting to do is match the existing house and the side yard here. That's what they're attempting to do and close the carport. They have a tree here that they're having to deal with. That is also in your, your stack. But let me, let me walk you through it. So this is the property off McDill between McDill and uh, Bayshore. This is the subject property here on lawn. That's what the house looks like. There's the, there's the carport that's existing now and the tree next to it. There's a closer look at the tree and the carport right here. That's provided by the applicant. Here's a better shot of it right there. And there's the site plan. They're trying to close it and match it all up the existing side yard setback. And Joel, they're not moving it forward with, it's not no, moving they're not. forward, it's no, just that not. it's just enclosing that existing right. carport. Um, zoning uh, calls existing structures like that, existing nonconformity with regards, okay. and we don't penalize necessarily f for the enclosure of it because it's existing, but we will require them to get the side yard setback in this thing. Very, okay. Um, Owen Williams reviewed this and found it consistent. And he has his report in here regarding the tree. The uh, petitioner also provided a previous uh, variance setback for the existing side yard back in 1983. 
within your packet. And this was the existing site plan at the time. With that being said, and my horrible report before you, uh, you're going for the side yard setback, which he, with the petitioner notified for, noticed for, for seven feet to four feet to enclose the, uh, the uh, carport. Staff's here if you have further questions. Okay, please state your name, address, and whether you've been sworn. Uh, Steve Michelini, I'm here representing Scott and Meredith Pieper. My address is uh, 2407 Sunset Drive. The address of the petition is 3011 West Lawn, and I have been sworn. Okay, got 10 minutes to present. Thank you, Joe. I'll get it. Which one am I supposed to push here? <laughs> well, I'll learn this. <laughs> I'll, I'll learn which buttons. Uh, this is an existing carport, and as Joel mentioned, uh, it was uh, approved by the Board of Adjustment in 1983. And uh, we had uh, petitioned administratively with the city staff to see if, uh, if that old petition would vest the ability to enclose this, this carport. And the, uh, the language and the records that were available from 53 were not clear. So it was the recommendation of the staff that we go forward with a, a, a new variance requesting to uh, enclose this. This is, this is the proximity of the oak tree, the existing columns for the carport, and their, their proposal simply is to enclose what is existing, not to move it out. There would be no addition moving it forward or closer to the tree. Um, we've discussed various construction methods of how to protect that tree uh, with the city staff. And uh, at this point, uh, going forward with the permitting and things like that, that we may have to put in gray beams, but those will be handled at permitting itself. We don't think there will have to be a new, a new foundation uh, just for the enclosure, but just for safety's sake, we, we may have to do that. Um, we talked to the adjacent neighbor to the east uh, who would be the most affected by this, and I'd, I'd like to read his letter into the record. He is supporting the enclosure of this carport. I'm the next door neighbor, east side, closest to the proposed variance to enclose the existing semi enclosed garage. The proximity of the existing garage and the petition to complete the enclosure does not concern me. My property is located at 3009 West Lawn, immediately adjacent to the property seeking the variance. My property is the one most directly affected by the granting of the variance, and I have no objection and wholeheartedly support the variance request. The existing garage is already in place, and enclosing it is, a logical, and <clears throat> is logical and will assist by re reducing visual and noise associated with garage activities. It is reasonable to allow the enclosure of the existing carport which already has two walls. The ability to complete the enclosure will improve the overall functionality and aesthetics of the home and will not negatively impact me. Impact me. In conclusion, I am in full support of granting this variance. Thank you for your consideration. And I'll hand it to staff for including in their package. Um, I believe that, you know, this, this, the, pipe, the Pipers uh, bought this in 2001 and they thought it would be a simple permitting issue to uh, enclose the garage. They have little children, and the mother is frequently transporting the children and wanted a safe garage to load and unload and out of the elements for her children. Um, so she was requesting that the, that the garage be allowed to have garage doors and a side that would help to ensure their safety. Um, this was not created by them. Um, we discovered in the 1983 Board of Adjustment granting of, the, of that variance that there wasn't sufficient evidence to allow the enclosure of the carport. So that's why we're before you to clarify that omission of information. Uh, with respect to affecting any other property owner, you have the most affected property owner testifying by letter that they would not be affected and that they, it was a logical uh, process to enclose it and that they were in support of that. With respect to justice being done, 
Um, we believe that that would be done. It, the concept would be to make the, the enclosure match the house uh, and not to uh, further extend or expand the existing carport. Um, the comprehensive plan does provide for the provisions that give you the ability to seek relief from different conditions, and this is one that I believe deserves that condition and relief. And uh, as far as um, harming anyone else, it doesn't harm anyone else, and it is consistent with the plan. Uh, that concludes my presentation, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this case? Seeing none, we'll open it for board questions. Uh, Mr. McLeany, I, I apologize. You may have said this, but and I can't tell if it's in the application because I can't really trust what's in this application. Um, are, are they just turning the carport into a garage or are they turning the carport into living space? No, sir. It's a, it will be a functioning garage. Okay. That's it is all not I intended for living that's space. That's all I needed to know. And I had a question about the blue image in our... Um, Packet site plan. Site plan. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it it oddly enough shows the closed garage, but a structure in front of it that, that looks like a carport. Yeah, that petition uh, was not finished. It was withdrawn. Okay. And so it it doesn't reflect what's what's being requested now. What's being requested now is for the existing carport only, and with no expansion. Uh, as shown on the in the photographs and also there is a site plan in there I just I don't, I'm not sure where exactly where it is right now thank you but there's no expansion the existing carport requested to be enclosed Are there any further questions seeing none We've got three minutes for rebuttal no sir thank you very much okay then we Close the public hearing and open it for a motion on board discussion. Okay, I will make a motion. I move that variance request for case VRB, uh, which is uh, case, uh, I'm sorry, for case VRB 21-34 for property located at 3011 West Lawn Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing uh, to um, reduce the side yard from seven feet to four feet to enclose an existing carport based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code. Specifically that the uh, carport is existing, uh, that it is uh, matching the existing um, side of the house, uh, that they are not uh, further encroaching in any way uh, into the setback other than what exists and enclosing the carport into a garage. Sam Walker, second. Second. Second for Ms. Walker. Those for aye. Motions approved six to zero. Thank you so much, board. It's been a pleasure spending the <laughs> evening with you. <laughs> You had something that. really wrong with the way these packets are coming through. I need to be able to read And that concludes tonight's hearing.